Hi there, folks. This is Matthew Seville with SLRLounge.com and today's episode of How We Shot It. This image here was from a wedding we shot this past weekend. It was shot here in Huntington Beach, California, and it's right on the beach. And it was an Indian wedding. You can see the setup up here at the front. Indian weddings are always really beautiful, and we always really enjoy photographing them. There's something special about this image. And let's see if you can guess what the heck it is without me showing you these other images here that we have in Adobe Camera Raw. What went into creating this image was a little trick that I've been using for detail shots for things like wedding venues, ceremony sites, and that kind of stuff. And to show you, to demonstrate, let me show you this other image here. This image here was shot at eye level. And as you can see, there's a huge difference in the overall impact of the image compared to this image here. Now, of course, I wish that there wasn't a parking lot here between the, the grass and the sand, but hey, what are you going to do, right? The, anyways, the point is that I did this. Here's a picture of me taken by one of our assistants. This is me capturing this photo, and it looks a little bit crazy, but this is the result is this image from an angle that is probably a good 15, 16 feet up in the air. I'm about uh, six foot tall or so, and then this, you know, extending it a little bit further. So 12, 14, 15 feet tall for the angle for this perspective. So now here's how I go about capturing a shot like this. What I do is, first and foremost, I have to pick a shutter speed that is way fast, fast enough so that I can get the shot without, because you know, my hand is gonna be shaking. The, the camera's gonna be way up on top of a tripod. I'm balancing it. So I need a really fast shutter speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to balance my ISO and aperture and shutter speed so that I can get usually about a 500th of a second or a thousandth of a second if possible so that I can trust every single shot I capture to be perfectly sharp even if I'm kind of wobbling a little bit and you know as you can imagine if I'm way up at the top if the camera's way up at the top of the tripod here even the slightest shake or movement is going to be extremely exaggerated as I'm clicking my photos. So the first thing I want to do is I pick my exposure, you know, I'm down here at eye level. I pick the exposure, as you can see, f16 at 350th of a second. So what I did was I bumped it down because this might have been just a little bit too slow. So I opened up my aperture to uh, f8 and I stopped down my shutter speed a stop and a half or two so that I could get as much shutter speed as possible without sacrificing any sharpness. And I, if I zoom in here, you can see, let me right click and go to 100%. You can see that I've got great sharpness here, and if I hit H to get my hand tool and scroll around, you can see I've still got sharpness even at the edges of the frame, so I'm doing pretty well on this old lens. Uh, as you can see, it's, a, uh, it's an old manual focus 18 millimeter lens, very, very sharp. But anyways, let's move on and talk about the next step. How do you actually capture a shot like this? Well, most cameras, I don't know, you might have to like put it on five second timer or 10 second timer and then hold the camera way up like this. But if you have a Nikon DSLR, a lot of the more advanced Nikon DSLRs have a built-in intervalometer. And what that does is it allows you to program the camera to click a photo every one second or every two or three seconds. So you get multiple clicks with your camera way up here at the top of, the, of this leaning tower of tripod or whatever you wanna call it. So I've, I have like a good five or 10 shots. You know, I just hold the camera up as long as I can withstand the arm strength or whatever. And so that way I'm not trying to wait like the five second timer and then time it perfectly and frame the shot perfectly. So that's the trick that I use since I have a Nikon DSLR. I turn on the intervalometer and I tell it to click a photo every two or three seconds. And then I just hold the tripod up until it clicks maybe five or 10 photos at the you know, different angles, trying to, you know, trying to hold the tripod level, basically hold the camera level. And then I bring it down and I just check the images after you know, five or 10 clicks. So that's the key ingredient here, in my opinion, as far as getting the shot quickly and reliably, instead of trying to do a five second timer or something and to pick, putting the camera up and checking the shot and you know bringing it back down and doing that 10 times, you just hold it up once, you click 10 photos, and then you bring it down and check them and one of them will turn out perfectly level and well composed. Or oppositely, as you can see, let's look at this photo again. Another thing that you can do is, if you don't have a built-in intervalometer to click multiple photos, some of the latest Canon cameras will click multiple photos for you 
if you put it on a second delay, but you have to go into the menu to program it. Or what you might be able to do is put it on the second, the two second timer or five second timer and then tell it to do an HDR, but only bracket by a third of a stop or something so that all your exposures are roughly the same. There's a handful of different workarounds if you, if you don't have a built-in intervalometer. The last thing you could do is you could, of course, use a cable wire, wired remote or a wireless remote or something so that you click your photos manually or get a cabled intervalometer. You know, there's a lot of $30 accessories out there that you can use. I've got a couple remote triggers from a company called Aperture that works really well. So anyways, there's a handful of options for you out there as far as getting the camera to click when it's way up at the top of your tripod like this. So, all right, folks, before we wrap up, let's talk about the post-production of an image like this really quick. And as usual, I'm just going to use my SLR Lounge preset system. And for this particular image, this is a great example of when I would just go to my mixology here and I would just click the Vivid Landscape mixology. I would try standard color usually. But what I did for this particular image was I just went straight to the HDR Max. And you can see right there, that's exact, it just works in one click. I did also add a little bit of burning and dodging to brighten up the central area here. But as you can see, with one click, the HDR Max gave me exactly what I needed for this particular image because the exposure was roughly neutral, but I didn't blow out the highlights or get too deep into the shadows. So that's what I love this HDR Max preset for here from the SLR Lounge preset system. And what it's doing, in case you don't have the SLR Lounge presets, basically what it's doing is, among other things in all of these other developed tabs here, the basic tab you can see, it's doing maximum contrast and it's brightening the shadows and the blacks all the way up and it's bringing the highlights and whites all the way down and of course some cameras the image quality may kind of fall apart as they say if you do this crazy editing but I happen to have a Nikon uh, this is a Nikon D700 so the shadows are kind of holding their own the highlights are holding their own and so this processing works all right anyways folks thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of how we shot it and we'll see you next time take care